In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe Welcome to New Life For everybody and somebody at Jesus Christ the Lord all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again Christ is we risen! Believe. He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. It is good, as always, to be with you. Today is Sunday, April 19th. It's a week after Easter, and we have some fun things coming up in the worship video for you, namely a guest preacher. Bishop Jeffrey Clements brings us the good news this morning. We'll have some special music. We'll have a worship guest praying the prayers for us today. So lots of good things. I want to start with a gathering question uh, today, and the gathering question this morning is what have been some really good parts about the stay at home order stay with it. <laughs> what have been some really good parts about staying at home um, more than you have been in a long time uh, you can press pause discuss amongst yourselves and then we'll have some new lifers uh, drop by and tell us what's been some good parts for new them life. good morning new lifers good morning Hello. So today's gathering question is, what is a positive thing, a good thing about staying at home? So what do you got, Michael? Uh, one of the good things I have like, experienced is just spending more time with family and playing more games. Playing games, huh? Yeah. What about school? What about it? No, not a good thing? No. Okay. E-learning is hard. No, it's not fun. Honey, what you got? I think the best part of staying home is just reconnecting with family. We have time for each other now, so we are doing things together. We're working on projects. We stained the deck together. It was a blast. We've done some gardening. We go on bike rides. We're actually just getting back to us and finding out what's important. And what's important is spending time together. That's what I got. That's awesome. See, and she thought she had to write down a bunch of notes and stuff, and I made her do it impromptu, and look what she came up with. All right, um, for me, I guess, blessed to be working, albeit from home. I have 6.45 alarm that puts me at work at 7 a.m., no tolls, no traffic, in my pajamas. I have a beautiful view out my window of our backyard and the birds that visit our feeder. I get to overhear Carol working from home and see an insight into Carol the supervisor that I've never seen around the house. Kind of like take your husband to work day, but not. Which gives me a whole new perspective on what she does when in the past all I heard was this happened at work or that happened at work. Same with the young man. How was school? Fine. What did you do? Nothing. Well, now with remote learning, I get to actually see Michael the student and Carol the director. And as for myself, as a lot of you know, we were displaced for seven months when the house burned and all we wanted was back home. And now being trapped home isn't being trapped at all. We're blessed to have the roof over our heads, the food in the fridge, everything that we all take for granted every day. So, more positives than I could probably list. And what do you guys got? 
please join us in prayer. O Lord our God, who has called us, your servants, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Jeff Clements and I serve as Bishop of the Northern Illinois Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Welcome to my home. Like you, I am staying at home doing my part to slow the spread of the coronavirus that has caused such chaos in our world. You and I are home today, as our mission statement says, for the sake of the world. We are loving our neighbors in ways that don't come naturally to us. We're used to going out and doing, and not so much staying and sitting. Thank you for what you are not doing in public today. I come to you today with a heart that's filled with gratitude for the life-changing ministries that your congregation continues to do in these challenging days. Whether it's keeping your food pantry open or sewing face masks, our congregations across the city have stepped up. And our congregations have continued to worship even though we have been forced to abandon our pews. Your pastoral leaders have quickly become proficient at new means of communication. They've been working extraordinarily hard to keep in touch with you and to offer pastoral care from a distance. They're now meeting with your congregation councils and your confirmation classes in front of com uh, computers. Their hearts have been broken by not being able to visit in hospitals and nursing homes. They're grieving the inability to conduct funerals. And pastors with children at home are juggling their roles as parent and teacher and pastor, all without clear boundaries. 
I really admire what they're doing. I'm grateful for the pastoral leadership of this synod, which is why I'm with you today. Lent, Holy Week, and the celebration of Easter are exhausting times under the best of circumstances. This year's demands have been different, but no less exhausting. In providing this sermon, I'm offering a small gift of time, which I hope your pastors, deacons, and other pastoral leaders will receive. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Have you ever noticed that of before? Easter is a season of the church year that began last Sunday when we marked the resurrection of our Lord. The church calendar invites us into a 50-day celebration right up until Pentecost, which will be May 31st of this year. Today... Eight days into this season, eight days into this celebration of Easter, it hardly feels like we've celebrated at all. Normally, this Sunday after Easter is usually a poorly attended one in our congregations. After all, it just doesn't stand up well to the grandeur of what we celebrate at Easter. By now, it usually feels like the party is over. In our sanctuaries... It usually looks like it, too. The lilies and other flowers have usually been taken home, and those that have remained have started to droop. The joyous music that we usually hear at Easter by now would just be an echo. Even in a normal year, it would feel like the party was over at home, too. Our company would have gone home, the leftover Easter ham would have been consumed, and by now, if you had colored Easter eggs, those would be out in the garbage. So here we are this year on the second Sunday of Easter, feeling as if we've missed the party or maybe even had it stolen from us. And we can't even tell if we've got other people in worship with us today, can we? Chances are, of course, that you're not worshiping alone. You just can't see everybody else. And even though we did not celebrate Easter in our normal ways, we certainly can celebrate good news. The good news. Think of it. Have we really missed Easter? Well, maybe we have. After all, we were not there when the angel rolled the stone away from the already empty tomb. We were not there to stand before Jesus to see him with our own eyes or touch him with our own hands. We missed Easter by, say, 2,000 years. Thomas missed that first Easter, too. Thomas was not with the other disciples to see Jesus when he came and greeted them that evening. I do sometimes wonder where he was, because he appears to have been the only one who was missing from the group. The disciples were more or less hiding out in fear. They had locked themselves in. Maybe Thomas had gone out under the cover of darkness with his face mask and gloves to go grocery shopping. Whatever the reason, Thomas was not there when Jesus came to, to those others and showed them his hands and his side. I think it's funny or maybe sad that Thomas has been called Doubting Thomas. He had no more doubts than any of the rest of his friends. Did you notice? Jesus walks in, says hello, and it isn't actually until he shows them his hands and his side that they recognize him. They had their doubts too. It's just that Thomas has been immortalized by his words, unless I see for myself, I just cannot trust that this is true. Can you imagine what would have happened if it had taken place today in the age of the internet? I can only imagine how Thomas would have fared. One of the disciples would have sent him a text saying, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. They might even have posted it on Facebook. Thomas would have written a comment, you must be kidding. And they'd say, no, look, we took a picture. 
Well, I'm not so sure. It could be photoshopped. Unless I see for myself, I'm not going to believe you. And then some of the other Facebook friends would begin to take sides. I'm with Thomas. You guys are nuts. And then there's somebody else would say, Nah, Thomas is wrong. He's always wrong. He's been wrong since we were in high school. Isn't that what happens today? Even then, his friends, Jesus' other disciples, might have asked, What's wrong with him? Why can't he just take the word of his best friends? So a week passes, and what a week that must have been for Thomas. It must have been torture. The others seemed so convinced their relationship to Jesus had been restored, but not so for Thomas. He must have felt so empty. For a week he lived not knowing that Jesus was truly alive, not knowing the truth. And then the opportunity came. They were all together again. Thomas was with them. Jesus comes to them and speaks to Thomas. Words of comfort. Words of proof. He says, touch me as you said you must. Don't be unbelieving. No more disbelief. Believe. The Gospel of John doesn't tell us if Thomas ever touched Jesus. What we are told is that uh, Thomas, right there, right then, confesses his faith. My Master, my Lord, my God. Some have read Jesus' next words to Thomas as rebuke or chastening. I read his words as if they were specifically meant for us today. Jesus said to Thomas, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Those words are for us who missed Easter, that first Easter. We didn't stand in front of the empty tomb. We heard no angel voices. We did not see our risen Savior. We had no opportunity to touch his hands or see his side. But we do have Thomas' confession. We have the witness of the church. For 2,000 years, the people of God have proclaimed that it is true. And Jesus said that those who are able to believe without seeing are blessed. I am so glad that Jesus said those words to me when he spoke them to Thomas. Because if I had been with Thomas, I would have been as untrusting and just as skeptical as he was. And today I sometimes think we're better off not seeing because so much of what we do see is not true. And we hardly know what to believe. Photoshop can make any photograph into a picture of something that isn't real. For me, it's possible that seeing might make it even harder to believe. The point is that Jesus met Thomas where he was with the needs that he had. That's the way Jesus takes care of doubt and unbelief and skepticism. Jesus meets us where we are with whatever needs we have. And that's how our faith is sustained. I am thankful that you are listening to me today, but I want you to consider why you are listening. Why did you feel it was important to hear God's word today? Is it because your parents had you baptized? Is it because your grandmother encouraged you? Is it because you had one particular Sunday school teacher who was loving and wonderful? Is it because you confirmed your faith at some point? Is it because you're part of a congregation that inspires you? Perhaps you've had all these experiences. Maybe they've all brought you to this day. Maybe those have brought you and I together. Or maybe it's none. Maybe it's a God thing. I really missed the choirs 
and joy of an Easter gathering. But our faith is sustained because Christ meets us where we are every day. There are many, many times that I've heard someone describe the experience that they had at a retreat as a mountaintop experience. Well, that's, that's fine. I've had those experiences too, those times when God just seemed so close because of where I was or who I was with or what we had done. But I know for a fact and from other experiences that I've had that Christ comes to us to meet us in the valleys too, the low places of life where we need him even more. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he still bore the scars of the crucifixion. The resurrection did not erase what had happened to him. Jesus comes to us today wounded and fully understanding all of our pain and all of our suffering. That's what I cling to today. Jesus comes to us as we continue to stay at home and shelter in place behind locked doors. He knows the fear that we have right now, the fear of getting sick, the fear of financial ruin, the fear of losing dear ones that we love, the fear of being alone, the fear of death. These 50 days of Easter are not going to feel like any that we have experienced before. But we can, in fact we must, stare into the face of our own fears and mortality with confidence because we know we believe that Jesus conquered death and that ultimately we have nothing to fear even though we can't stand face to face with Jesus I hope that you will trust his promises Jesus comes to you where you are knowing your needs to give you peace. Amen.
Okay. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, united in Christ. Let us confess the faith we hold in common. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That's a good job. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie Schmidt, and I would like you to join me in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, in the midst of this crisis, help us to remember you are still in control. We praise you for being the one constant in our lives that remains the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Remind us to turn to your words instead of to the media to calm our fears. Grant our elected officials the knowledge to make wise decisions. Be with all those in need of your healing power and grant their caregivers strength and comfort. We thank you for the gift of family and friends. As we remain apart, open ways to show them our love and concern, reaching out with a phone call, a greeting card, or maybe just a smile. Keep us calm and grateful as we face these new challenges. We look forward to being together again soon to share the things that we have taken for granted, like worshiping and singing praises to you in church, having coffee with friends, and receiving hugs from our family and friends. We love you, God, and we ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Okay, receive a benediction for your day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our worship has ended. Our service to each other and our neighbor continues. Go about your day in Easter peace and know that Jesus is with you. See you next time. Ready? Okay. Okay. Go. Yes. Ready? Okay. Mom, ready? Wait, wait. I, are we, wait. Time out, time out. Um, you're going first. Okay. And you, wait, and then we're going to say hallelujah together? Yes, this is recording. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Christ right. is risen. Wait, I wasn't looking at it. Okay. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. No, he, Christ is risen indeed. Okay. Christ is risen indeed. No, from the top. Christ is risen. Indeed. No, 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 no. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He Christ is. is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So let our faith be more than And greater than the songs we sing. In our weakness and temptation